Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how I made my CNC stand for my Inventables X-Carve. This thing is awesome. It's got a ton of good storage, a slide out tray on the bottom, as well as a flip out table for my laptop. Stick around, because the video is up next. So I decided to give in and actually purchase a CNC router. I went with the Inventables X-Carve. So I got it all set up, but it took up pretty much the whole of my assembly table here. So now I've kind of moved it to the ground, but obviously I don't want to keep it there. So what I'm going to do is create a stand for the CNC. So if you want to download the build plans, check out the description below. Um, it'll take you to my website where you can download those. But that's today's project. We're going to get my CNC router off the ground and onto a stand. So to start off, we're going to make the carcass out of two by fours. Now, if you know me, I don't like to use two by fours just straight from the lumber rack. I like to cut them out of two by eights originally just because it gives you a lot straighter boards and better grain. Now you're probably wondering why we're using two by fours on the carcass instead of just building it like a normal cabinet with plywood. And the only reason I'm doing it this way is because Douglas fir is probably the cheapest wood in my location. And I just wanted to reduce the amount that I had to spend as well as reduce the amount of sheets of plywood I had to purchase. So to start off, I cut everything down to the proper size based on the build plans. And then I gang marked all of the studs to where the stretchers on the sides will go for the side panels. I also added pocket holes to each one of the stretchers to where they'll connect to the legs. Then I used glue and my pocket hole screws to set the stretchers in place. Obviously I used a clamp as I always do with pocket holes because they like to move. And I checked for square along the way to make sure everything was going to be lined up and that I was going to get a level table at the end. Now if you look at the top right corner you will see that the four woman is on site today so I've got to be on my best behavior uh, to make sure that this thing works out great and that this thing gets approved for use. But you'll see her later in the video. Once one panel was complete, I repeated the same process to create another panel and then decided to connect those two panels together using long stretchers that will go across the front. To connect these stretchers, I used the same pocket holes and glue to make sure that they're set. Now, this process would be much easier if I actually had T-Track accessories set up for my T-Track. I wouldn't have to use clamps to clamp it down to the assembly table. That will be a video coming up soon where I'll show how to make some DIY style T-Track accessories because I really badly need them for my assembly table. But I just kind of made do with what I had and used my parallel clamps to hold everything in place while I screwed and glued everything together. If you have a better process of how I should have done this, please leave a comment and let me know. I'd sure like to learn uh, new processes on how to assemble a big table like this with limited space. After the stretchers were all attached, I moved it to the ground and began working on attaching some of the bottom stretchers. So I used my parallel clamp to kind of clamp the two sides together while I lined up the two sides with the lines that I made previous on all of the boards. While I set them in place with a little bit of glue and those pocket hole screws. Again, there might be a better process on the way of adding these stretchers. I've never really made something out of a frame of two by fours. And so I'm learning on the fly and kind of adjusting as I go. I think it turned out pretty well though. Once the bottom stretchers were all complete, I flipped the whole thing over and added two more stretchers across the middle to support the plywood top. Now you could probably just add one that would be enough support, but I had some extra wood, so I thought, hey, why not? Next, I cut down a sheet of Baltic birch three quarter inch plywood to create a space for a couple drawers that will go in. 
Now there will be a couple panels that will go on the side to give me space for the drawers to be supported as well as a place for me to install the drawer slides. I installed these using a little bit of glue and some trim screws that go straight into the 2x4s. And then to attach the bottom that will connect these two, I use a little bit of glue and those same trim screws to make everything as permanent and sturdy as I could. Then once that was all done, I flipped the whole thing over to add a middle divider that will divide where the drawers go. I decided to go with two kind of shallow drawers on the left side and then a deep drawer on the right. This will give me a little bit of versatility as far as what I can store in this stand. I added the divider by using, you guessed it, more glue and more pocket hole screws. And then I needed to add a little bit of a support on the back to make sure that this divider had a place to connect to. And this method seemed to work just fine and was very sturdy. After that, it was time to get the drawers all assembled. So I used the same Baltic birch plywood as I used before for the drawers. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about how I assembled these drawers. It's pretty much the same method I use in every video. Although I have a sliding compound miter saw, I don't really like to use a slide on it because I've had it kick back on me before. So I like to cut little relief cuts. I'd like to know whether or not you think this is a good method or if you would prefer to use a slider. It's actually pretty nerve wracking when I use the slider, so I prefer not to. Hey, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't had an opportunity already. Uh, if you have had the opportunity and you haven't yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. I've got a lot of really cool projects that are planned for the next half of this year and I'm super excited. So make sure that you get subscribed and ring that notification bell. After all the drawer pieces were cut to the proper width, I drilled all the pocket holes for the drawers and then proceeded to glue them all together and set them in place. I like to use this little pocket hole clamp from Rockler. It seems to really help keep things in place because like I've said multiple times, pocket holes like to move on you when you decide to screw them in place. So I really highly recommend getting this if you do a lot of pocket hole joinery. I'll make sure that I include a link to it in the description below along with all of the other tools and materials that I use for this build. Once all the drawer carcasses were all assembled, it was time to attach the bottoms. I just used a bead of glue and then fourth inch plywood on the bottom and tacked them in place with my brad nailer. Like I mentioned in the intro, this stand includes a tray. The reason I wanted to build a slide out tray is because I actually have a smaller laser engraver that I need to find a home for. This tray will give me easy access to the laser engraver when I need it as well as a little bit more room to store things like hoses or a crosscut sled, anything else that I want to have easy access to. I use the same method as I did with the drawers, just on a bigger size tray, and I used half inch plywood instead of quarter inch plywood for the bottom, just to give me some extra strength and stability. Once all the drawers were put together, I used a flush cut trim bit with my router just to make sure the bottoms were all even with the sides. Then it was time to get all the drawer slides and the drawers installed. Now I'm not gonna go too much into detail on the drawer slides, it's really simple, especially if you have the Rockler drawer slide jig. That thing is awesome and works super well to make sure that you get these things lined up perfectly with each other and spaced out evenly. And after I got the drawers installed, I got the tray installed. Ooh, ah. Then it was time to install the show fronts. And my 
my method is far from perfect when it comes to installing these things. I just kind of winged it and used a clamp to clamp it in place, eyeballed it, and screwed in the back. Luckily, the bottom one was fairly straight and I was able to use a shim to reference it for the top one. Let me know your process on this. If you have a great resource on how to install faux fronts, I would love to watch it. Otherwise, these drawers turned out fine for shop furniture. Next, it was time to install some workbench casters. I used these workbench casters from my dog hole workbench that I had previously, and to install them is pretty easy. Just followed the instructions and screwed them on. These casters will give me a lot of flexibility and mobility to move my CNC around my shop as needed. And of course, when your table can move, you move too. Time for a little uh, dance off with the CNC table. Next, it was time to get the top all installed. I used a bead of glue around the entire frame and then installed the three quarter inch Baltic birch top, setting it in place with an inch and a half brad nails around the entire thing. Then I flush trimmed all of the sides up to the frame with my flush trim router bit. I like to cut any top that I do a little proud than what it actually needs to be. That way I can flush trim it. It just makes it smoother and looks more professionally done if you do it this way. So one of the big features that I wanted to make sure I had for this stand was a flip out table for my laptop. I found these really awesome brackets on Amazon. They're meant to be used for a flip out desk from your wall. They flip up 90 degrees and lock in place and are only able to be released by pressing a button. They can also hold up to 100 pounds, which is far more than I'm gonna need because really the only thing that will be on here is my laptop. Installation is pretty easy. It comes with instructions and all the hardware you need to be able to install them. Go check them out. I'll make sure I link them in the description below. But like I mentioned before, the forewoman was on site and had to make sure that everything was up to code. She weighs about 30 pounds. So as you can see, this table is strong enough for my laptop. Of course, I got an approval clap and smile. And as quickly as she came, she left. With the table all complete, we could finally get it put into the correct spot in my shop and get my CNC router all installed with the help of my dad, of course. Then I got everything that I had for the CNC organized into the drawers. Well, not really organized, more just put into these drawers. I'm gonna create some holders later on for all of it. With the slide out tray, I put my laser engraver on the bottom as well as my crosscut sled for my table saw. And after that, I pretty much called this project done. I'm super happy to finally have a dedicated place for my CNC router and that this machine isn't just sitting on the ground.